here, here's something, here's a thought. I'll go emotional for a second. I believe that the banking process is somewhat of a culture that many minorities in the United States could potentially adopt. You know, I took some notes here. I wanna give you some, some statistics, right? If, if you guys that are listening, watching, you, you may have heard me dive into this a little bit. And this is, this is tackling the mindset part, the discipline part, and the cultural you know, beliefs that we have about money and, and the system and how you and I operate in the economy. So I love studying other cultures. Um, one in particular, we've got the entire Asian community and you've got the Jewish community. You've got Mormons. These are three distinct cultures that, that understand how to rotate dollars very effectively. Now, I went on Google and tried to find some information, but I was able to find that in the Asian community, they, they rotate dollars, $1, $1 on average gets rotated over a 28 day lifespan before it leaves their community into another community. The Jewish culture do it in roughly 19 days. Caucasian, white, do it in about 17 days. Now, I don't know if this stat is true. This is staggering. I couldn't find anything on Hispanics. I couldn't find anything. But if this is true in the African American community, specifically in the US, I don't know other countries, but according to some research I found, six hours, six hours in the African American community. I don't know if this pertains to Jamaicans, Haitians, Bahamians, or if this was one lump sum of just minorities in the US, you know, and I will continue to do research. But I mean, if that's true, then Hispanics aren't so far away from that, from what I understand. So that's pretty interesting. This is where it gets emotional, right? Because then you start to say, oh, wow, you know, how is it that these other cultures are doing this? Where, you know, when you look at every plaza, in South Florida, I ever gone to has a Chinese restaurant. They're there. The laundromat, the massage parlor, the nail spot. It's, it's Asian, 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 Asian. When I went to Bahamas, all their resorts, the Asians, Chinese, they own them. I'm like, this is incredible. Whatever it is that they're doing, I'm sure, you know, keep it general. I want to be optimistic and say that it's majority legit some fraudulent oppressive and you know we can get into all that but just looking at the 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 culture behind certain values certain people that do things a certain way i know in my own household i'm puerto rican i'm colombian not once has the conversation of money ever been brought up from zero all the way to 18 19 20 years old it was me that brought up money conversations in my household. It was me that told my mom, get out of debt. It was me that said, hey, mom, build your credit. It was me that said, hey, mom, start a business. Let's go, right? So this is where the passion, the mindset, the discipline may help some of you that are watching, listening, that have been following me for a while say, you know what? That's it. I have to make a change whether it's this becoming your own banker thing or just as simply as getting out of debt, getting your money right, building credit, both personal and business, starting your own business and influencing your community, your culture to adopt a new culture that will better the culture long-term. Now for me, that culture was the kingdom for me. And, and in that, I'm looking at other cultures that practice kingdom cultures, kingdom values, kingdom principles. Principles are things that I can rest on that no matter what happens, the principle can never be violated. It is the user that gets violated by the principle, right? So if this is principle, if this is fact, that gravity is real, right? And no matter what, that if I jump off a building, 
I ain't gonna fly, right? I'm dead. That's a fact. There's, there's nothing that I can do to affect gravity. It's a principle. So therefore, I'm able to rest on that and say, you know what? I'm not gonna jump off a building. It doesn't make sense, right? I lose my life. There's too much risk. I have a 0.001% chance of living. So how can we do that with our money? How can we ensure the probability of success with our money? How can we do that? And I think from a fundamental standpoint, how we rotate dollars in our community. Let me go a step deeper. Let me go even deeper. Let's look at the church, okay? And let's look at businesses. I found another stat. It says 90% of US businesses are family owned. And of that 90%, I wanna say only 30%, according to some of the research that I've done, only 30% succeed in the second generation. So that literally means I'm Denzel Rodriguez, I'm 25, I start a business, right? And I run it for 30, 40 years, and then I have a son or daughter, which then gets passed on to them. And by the time they're a grown adult, or whatever, or by the time they, they die, the business also dies, gets liquidated, it gets sold, that's it, second generation. That's what that means. So 90% of US businesses are family owned. Only 30% succeed in the second generation. Only 15% make it to the third generation. Who is in the 15%? I already know it's it's the Asians, it's the it's the Jewish community, it's the it's the Caucasians, it's the Italians. Man, they do it well. So I say, okay, well, how can I, as a Puerto Rican Colombian, adopt some of that? You know what the Asians are doing, what the Jewish people are doing, what Caucasian, what the Italians are doing, the Irish. My goodness, how, how can I adopt that? And I, and I look at them and I say, oh, well, it looks like for the most part, there, there is a sector of their religion and faith that ties very heavily with how they operate their money. For example, there's cultures that don't celebrate Christmas, right? There's cultures that don't celebrate birthdays. So you could look up, you could Google how much the average American spends at Christmas on the birthday. Let's say it's a couple thousand. I know in my household, I have a mom and a stepdad. Both of their incomes combined do not break 100K. For as long as I lived on planet Earth, never broke over 100K. Yet, they were able to spend 2 to 5% of their income on Christmas. 100,000, 2 to 5%, that's 2 to $5,000 of their income that could have been saved and invested over the last 20 years, 25 years that I've been on planet earth. That's a humongous nest. That's a humongous savings cushion by not, by, by releasing one culture of celebrating Christmas and adopting a new culture that doesn't. Oh my God. That's one way to rotate dollars back into your community is to just recapture two to 5% of your income from Christmas and your birthday. Is it gonna suck a little bit? Maybe, I don't know. It might actually be really rewarding because you look at what these other communities are doing, right? Let me go deeper. The holidays, 4th of July. How many of you spend thousands on fireworks for, for eight minutes of, uh, of um, adrenaline rush? Eight minutes. I, I want, I want 8,000, I want 8 million minutes of an adrenaline rush in my life. Not no eight minutes, not no five to 10 minutes of opening presents, knowing that I'm broken in debt in the process. Am I getting deep? Let me know in the comments. Am, 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 I, am I striking some chords where some of you, that was what you needed. It wasn't the technical details. Now I know a lot of my audience are, are technical, right? You need to know the numbers and okay, it makes sense, great. Once I know the numbers, it makes sense. But there are quite a few of you that need the mindset, the discipline transformation to occur. And maybe when I attack it from a cultural point of view, hey, this is how you were raised. And potentially if you adopt this new kingdom culture in your life, 
that could, we could easily recapture costs in a matter of five to seven years. Easily. I won't say easily, simply, simply put, right? So maybe that's one way of rotating dollars. Let me, let me stop celebrating Christmas and let me stop celebrating birthdays. Now, what, is it, what does that really mean? All it means is, hey, I'm not gonna spend two to 5% of my income on a freaking birthday, on a Christmas. You know, I hate to break it to you, Santa's not real, right? So understanding that, like, wow, like I look back 25 years, I look back 25 years, we never missed a Christmas. Some people might be proud of that. But in my house, I look and I say, what the hell is that? 25 years, I've been celebrating Christmas, but for 25 years, none of you have invested more than 10 grand in anything, no business, right? So my household, Puerto Rican, Colombian, and my, my stepdad is Irish. I think a little Italian, Polish, something like that. And the, the disconnect of, of money. And I'm just like, wow, when will the shift occur? So maybe that is something you ought to consider. Oh, wow, you know, I get it, become your own banker and that's a product that we can eventually get. But you're gonna need capital to fund anything. Most of you just need the capital and then you'll get started. But since you don't have the capital, you get stuck and you stop and you quit. And I'm simply bringing to you a strategy of saying, hey, let's change the culture. It has nothing to do with circumstance of the color of your skin. I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that me personally, the color of my skin is going to dictate how my life will end up. I don't believe it. I refuse to believe in that. So I say, you know what? I am going to take on individual responsibility as a kingdom citizen and also as a citizen of the United States. And I'm going to adopt a new culture. And that may include not celebrating Christmas, not celebrating 4th of July, not, not, you know, buying gifts is what I mean during Christmas, like actually celebrating what it actually means, right? The birth of Jesus, like, come on, you know? So, and then birthdays, you know, not getting a present, but just spending quality time with the person that I care about, having a conversation, you know, once a year, here's a new culture, once a year, when the person increases their age by one, right, your birthday, you do an annual business kingdom economy meeting in your household, husband, wife, and the kids, whoever turned a new age, you have a kingdom economic get together, sit down, whatever you want to call it, and you discuss, here's how we're going to impact, here's how we're going to make a drastic shift in our economy. And here's how we're gonna impact the local community and influence that our people, our culture, to strive to do better. And then we influence other cultures and we gain the power, the authority, the businesses, and now we're on every street and every corner like a McDonald's, right? What's the harm in that? And I think one of the most effective ways to possibly do this is through the church through the church. The church is one of the best places to gather a local community. So imagine in the church, a kingdom oriented church that welcomes all cultures to adopt the kingdom culture. And then in those Sunday worship events, those meetings, those Wednesday night prayers, whatever it is, every quarter, every month or whatever it is, they, they have a kingdom sit down where we discuss all the economies at that church. And we talk about how do we rotate dollars in this church? Oh, well, Sue runs a, runs a, uh, a car washing business with John. They've been married for 25 years. And David over here has a tax business. So Sue and John, can do business with David inside the community. And then David will bring his car and his wife's car and his son's car and tell four or five other friends to go to this car wash instead of the, the general one, right, at the gas station. No, we're gonna go to the mom and pop. And then Samantha 
has a, you know, a Spanish restaurant. So, you know, the service is food. Okay, well, whenever the family wants to go out and eat, we'll go there. And then uh, Tim has a financial coaching business. And then uh, Mary has a life insurance business. And uh, Deborah has a life coaching business. So they're all in the kingdom. They're all in, in the, and all different nationalities and cultures, right? This, this is really cool. It's not exclusive. So all cultures coming together rotating dollars in the same community, building up businesses, increasing capital, and then establishing your own banking system in each household where the death benefits of each kingdom citizen, roughly 10% or more, goes right back to the church, and then the church can fund capital ventures, uh uh-oh, can fund ventures into the second third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation from one church because each kingdom citizen understood, oh, this is what I need to do to ensure that my children's children are set up financially, but also morally, constitutionally, kingdom cult. The culture of the kingdom is now in the household, right? We've adopted these cultures that put us way ahead has nothing to do with how much money you make it's all about what you keep it's all about what you keep i have clients that make over six figures living paycheck to paycheck yet i have a single mom that is asian that makes 50k but she lives off 25 thousand a year and is able to save 30 to 40 percent of her income to become her own banker and then the husband operates the same. It's, a, it's amazing. This stuff is amazing. Am I getting somewhere? Is, is this landing? Are you guys liking this? I know Anna has a thumbs up. Yolanda says, thank you for the wake up call. Willing to tell it like it is. I hear you and walk in the light you shared by God's grace. That's from Yolanda. Uh, William Johnson's agree. Too many holidays. And if, it, if I don't bring home the dozen roses on anniversary, Valentine's Day, birthday, Mother's Day, I'm in the doghouse, right? That's a culture, man. That's a culture. Like, man, isn't that terrible? That whether it's the husband or the wife, you know, putting on these expectations to supply the needs in your household for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, birthday, a New Year's, all these holidays. It's every single holiday is roughly 1% of your income. So imagine, well, one to 2%. So imagine you just redirected, say, two out of the holidays. All right, maybe maybe Christmas is too hard. All right, well, let's get rid of Valentine's Day. What the heck is that about? All right, let's adopt a new culture. Say, okay, we're not gonna celebrate it. That's our culture. I'm not gonna celebrate Valentine's Day and 4th of July and, that, and I just rerouted 3% of my income to save, invest, and give. You start there. You build up the capital and then you and then you influence the wife the husband you say listen i want to be free independent kingdom citizen of the united states of america i want to be free that's the whole point of this country to be free right exercise your opinions state your your thoughts your statements right speak your mind you know, share your stories, your truths, right? Your failures, your successes, and make something of yourself. Individual responsibility. Can we do that? Is that possible? I think so, but I'm gonna have to not sacrifice. It's not a matter of sacrificing. It's just a shift in the culture. That's all I'm doing. I'm just shifting the culture of your household. Okay, instead of 14 roses, I'm gonna give you 14 reasons why I love you. And I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna shout it out to the top of the roofs to my neighbors. Maybe that's more valuable, you know? Instead of a dozen roses, I'm gonna give you a dozen strategies to start a business, the two of us, husband and wife, to start a business and multiply wealth. How about that? How do you like them apples for Valentine's Day? On your birthday, I'm gonna give you, you know, if your wife's turning 45, Listen, on your birthday, I'm going to give you 45 reasons why I'm going to be the very best man 
you've ever seen in your life, right? And vice versa. The wife, husband's turning 40, 46, 47, whatever it is. Hey, husband, as a wife, I'm going to give you 47 reasons why I'm the woman of your dreams and why this marriage is going to last another 40 years because we're going to change our diet to live longer to give us more time to create wealth. We're going to beat the average life expectancy in America of roughly 70 to 80, and we're gonna beat it by 20 years. We're gonna live to 100, which gives us an additional 20 years to establish and ensure wealth that we create a legacy worth living for. Am I getting somewhere? Am I getting somewhere? Candy says, Kingdom Community. Yo, Yo Dita says, uh, love it. Uh, Stevie, cool, cool, cool. All these holidays are just retail sales days anyways. All right, cool, let's see. Let me try and find some questions. So I, I, I'm gonna break down. I'm gonna stop with the emotional approach. I'm a technical guy, but I can definitely get passionate when I truly believe in something. All right. Way Out West says, there was a very prosperous black community in Tulsa, I know of this story, where money changed hands on average of 19 times before leaving the community. Unfortunately, that community was burned slash bombed to the ground. Yeah, for those that are very interested in that story, it's called, just look up Black Wall Street. You'll be, you'll be astonished how they operated in a kingdom-like manner. You'll be astonished how they operated, right? Look that up. Maybe that'll be the shift. You say, wow, wait a minute. My culture actually used to operate like that. And now all I got to do is repent, which means to change my way of thinking and reestablish, remember how my kingdom culture operated. So you may not even have to look too far out. You may just have to just look at history a little bit and see what were the things that occurred, right? Whether it was a bad thing, a positive thing, and everything in between, just look at the economic system of how they operated. How can I adopt that today? Because if they did it back then, when there were lesser freedoms, what makes you think we can't do it now in an environment where there's more freedom than ever before, right? And that could be argued, I understand, depending on what circumstance you're in and totally get that part. But if they did it back then, who's to stop you from doing it now in the 21st century?